I'm delighted to say that Cooler Shaker are in the house, everyone. It's uh, it's an honour uh, to be with you. The album's out. Um, just tell us a bit about when it's coming out and the couple of singles you got off it because I listened to Waves earlier and it's such a great song. It goes back to that, um, you know, typical Cooler Shaker era, but definitely got some new inspirations on that tune as well. Yeah, well, you know, we we played we played it live in front of an audience um, early early last year and and kind of test road tested it, uh, which is the best way to work out whether something is going to work or not. And uh, yeah, I think I wrote it after a show in Manchester. We played at the Albert Hall, and it was um, it was a great night. And I just so sort I of had had it in my head about. You know, it, it, when you when you're on stage and and there's a big crowd, it it often does look like um you know a, a sort of ocean or a waves and oh, I guess it was all subliminal, you know, going in there. Um, but it's a track that turned out really good. Yeah, it's got us and and it also it, even for us, it was it felt like a bit like we were sort of flashing back to when we were at college and there's a sort of baggy baggy influence there yeah it's definitely got that sort of 60s feel to it as well like it, it could be like a it's definitely got a bit of beach boys thrown in there a bit of that sort of sound i just i just love it and the album's um when it does come out it's going to be great as well but just take us back to that trip that you went on to india then because obviously you're still really inspired by indian culture and uh spirituality and that sort of thing is that something that still definitely follows you around on on the new album if it does, it follows me around. It just followed me in here. I shut the door. It's still so I can see it peeping through the keyhole. Um, it, it wasn't just one trip. I mean, for, for you know, for all of us. Um, but speaking personally, I see I grew up in a place called Norwood Green in between South Old and Hounslow. So it's like massive Punjabi community. And um, so I, you know, I just, um, that was my environment and, and the smells and the music and the, and the culture. And then, um, and then, and then when I was about, uh, when I was about 12 or 13, I fell in love with a girl who was out of my league. She was a vegetarian and she was a Krishna devotee. And then through that, I kind of, you know, I became... I became from being a very staunch carnivore. I, <laughs> just in, instantly, I was like, "Yeah, how can people do it?" Yeah, I just thought, so I just became a vegetarian, and then you know, like gradually, gradually, I just kind of got more and more into a different way of looking at the world and life. And then obviously that brings in the music and the philosophy. So you know, you just it doesn't kind of disconnect you from your background. It doesn't like growing up going to church or you know being around english music it doesn't mean i don't have a connection with that anymore but it just i just have another context or another way of looking at it as well which for me sort of deepened my relationship and i could feel a bit more like it's all one happy family actually yeah i mean I think that's what made you guys still so different because songs like Tapva, for example, and some of your hits off uh, K and the, the first couple of records that you did, it's obviously got that white Britpop sound to it. But, you know, there's, I guess, it almost sounds like you're like the George Harrison of that era, to so sort of put it like that. But there's, there's so much going on there. And I think that's what makes those records so good because it's just totally different to like anything else. Yeah, we did get a kick out of that. We could, we could, we felt that we would, you know, we, we turned up dressed differently and, and, and getting, getting off on that. And, you know, you, 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 there's a price to pay because if you, if you stick your neck out, you do get, you also get a kicking, you know, a, a, anyone in life, you know, if you're going to be different and be proud about being different, then you are going to get <laughs> a, a kicking. But, you know, that's part of it. And, 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 um, you know the audiences re responded and 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 it's been part of our whole story is that you know we we were a sort of an, an anomaly and um yeah george Harrison was a was a massive massive influence obviously because he kind of gave the beatles a layer of meaning that they probably otherwise wouldn't have had i mean john lennon brought in the sort of slight sort of political 
neurotic, you know, self-help angle, you know, working through his demons very publicly. But George, you know, went really, really deep and he went into India and he got into the whole mystical thing. And it really gave the Beatles this whole wonderful layer of personality and meaning that he wouldn't have had otherwise. And we, and we always kind of gravitated towards him as our, as our sort of mentor. Yeah, because, I mean, both your parents were, were actors. Was that something that kind of influenced you to become like a singer? Because obviously, you know, people like David Attenborough and family, friends like that, that you had, is it only now that you realise that, hang on a minute, it was probably not normal that I was, you know, family friends with some of these like big actors and big names? Well, I, yeah, it's true. I mean, it is normal when you grow up around it. And then, you know, every now and again, something really weird happened and then you go, oh my God, you know, I mean, um, I met, uh, you know, uh, there, there was a time where um, my mum went to see a friend uh, who was married, who just happened to be married to Steven Spielberg. She went to see, <laughs> you know, and she didn't tell us where she was going. And we went to meet her at Elstree Studios. And and my, me and my kid brother, we were, I don't know, we were, we must have been, you know, 10 or 12 at the time at the most. And we, my mum was talking to this woman, we didn't know who she was. And then all of a sudden, Harrison Ford came out in the full <laughs> clobber with the hat and the whip, just like, hey, how's it going? Uh, he was on his way to work. And and me and my brother just froze. It was a massive shock to us. It was, we weren't ready for it. So there were moments where, like, you know, you realise this is not normal. And then, um, but then a lot of it, you know, they were just friends of the family. And I think, I think you know, it, it, it is, you know, it is a freak show. It really is. Yeah, I mean, what what do you make of the sort of music industry now? Because there's there's bands out there like a Bibio Sound Machine, who's sort of like a Nigerian dance band. You've got a lot of yeah. African influences on sort of white music, and you've also got a lot of the Indian stuff as well. I, I think with streaming nowadays, like Gorillas are a great example. That there's so many bands now that are just picking and choosing stuff from all over, a bit like what what you were doing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, it it the world has 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 shrunk and everybody's cross pollinating and it's great. And and I think that you know there are these there are these people who who, who talk about you know oh well, you can't use that because it's not from your culture and da da da. And 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 there's been you know that argument made against us in the past. But listen, we've grown up in a multicultural society. You can't. You can't have one rule and say it's a good thing and then get pissed off when people start being influenced by each other. You know, we, this is the way the world is now and it's, it's better for it and it's more interesting and music continues to evolve and keep people continue to, to be, to be borrowing stuff from each other and nicking stuff because that is essentially what music yeah. is. So everybody's nicking ideas of everybody else and turning it into something else. So when you make a Cooler Shaker album, then like the one that, that's about to come out, what is it that you listen to? Because there must be you must have like a great vinyl collection. I'm picturing you like sat down listening to some like Indian like '60s hippie album, and then a bit of like <laughs> guitar music and George Harrison. Because it's like a sort of soup of just everything thrown in, and it's brilliant. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I've got a rug. I sit on a rug with a big load of vinyl and a big spliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we we do have some vinyl and, and um it is quite eclectic uh, what i noticed about when jay darlington came back in the band and you know was playing hammond organ with us again and it was the original gang back who made k um which made this record is that you realize you know that you you your your first audience you're you're playing for each other and you're thinking oh jay will like this and and Paul, you know, you're all kind of conscious that you are listening to each other and, and getting off on it. And, you know, if I do something a bit cheesy or Paul does play something that, you know, it's a bit muso, we all kind of like give each other a look and say, oh, I see what you did there. And that's either a good thing or a bad thing. But, you know, Jay, Jay's influences are very heavy, heavy 60s and prog. And so he brings all of that in, and um, you know, that 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 that's a very rich 
that's a it's a very strong spice to add into the <laughs> to the into the soup. So I think that that definitely contributed on this record. Yeah, and uh, you've got some installs coming up. Do you enjoy doing more like intimate shows so you can spend time more with your fans, or do you prefer doing more arena shows and having more sort of lighting and effects and that sort of thing? I definitely prefer arenas. Yeah. No. Well, look, I tell you what it is. Whether it's a gig, gig, a gig that's 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 you know sort of big, or or whether it's an intimate show, you, when you're when you're playing music and you're getting feedback online, it's just not the same. I'm I'm afraid. You know, even if you you know sh people sharing comments, it ain't the same as meeting people and even doing signings, which we're doing this week. You know, from this weekend, we're doing a few days of that um you know just getting going and seeing people and ha having the record in your hand and and getting to talk about it no it means a lot and it it, it suddenly it, it's real and until that point it isn't real it sort of it feels abstract yeah and there's a, there's a lot of new artists now that have got loads of streams but when they go on tour they're playing to kind of toilet venues because i think nowadays it's really important to do live shows because you can feel so detached from it like you're saying if you just putting stuff online because you don't build a, a fan base up that's very true and um and it's something that you know sort of all sort of people who come from the more of the old school like us have to get used to this idea that like oh my god you know like w we work at a rehearsal studio and there's a guy there who who got like a million streams on one of his songs and we were like wow well, congratulations you know like woo and and then he was he was playing in a pub and there was about 15 people in the audience so it is really weird i think what what we've always been really grateful for and lucky to have is is a, this loyal um core for, core audience who who support our records and and you know come to the gigs and are interested to see the band evolve and so when we make a record we really feel like um you know we're we're doing it for ourselves we're also excited about you know how it's going to be received and the surprises that are there right so tell us when the album's out the album is out in like two days isn't it yeah isn't it like when a friday morning friday morning. yeah it's candlemas candlemas I'm not entirely sure what that what that festival is Candlemas. It's a very old festival, and I think it was like goes back to like the first time Jesus went to the temple, you know. <laughs> but it's also a great name for a prog band. Right. Um, so thanks for talking to us. You've been amazing, Crispin. Um, yeah. Well, that's a good interview. Thank you, and I hope I hope they let you out on parole soon. 